How to tell if you have good cards in Hearthstone. If you want to see how cards with similar effects stack up to each other, you can always check their card power, or sometimes called card value. The card's power is what a card should be capable of doing based on its mana cost. To determine the card power, simply take the mana cost of the card and multiply it by 2, then add 1 to the total. Take Bloodfen Raptor, for example. He costs 2 mana to play. 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 5, so Bloodfriend Raptor has a card power of 5, like all other 2 mana cards. Now let's take a look at his stats. Bloodfriend Raptor is a vanilla card, meaning he has no effect, so you just calculate his health and attack to see if his card power matches up to his stats. He has 3 attack and 2 health, 3 plus 2 equals 5, so Bloodfriend Raptor is a balanced card because his stats equal his card power. Now let's take a look at another vanilla card called Chilwin Yeti, another really good one. He has a 4 mana cost, so he has a card power of 9. He has 4 attack and 5 health. 4 plus 5 equals 9, so Chilwin Yeti is a balanced card. Determining the card power of vanilla cards is easy because once we start going over the cards with special abilities, it gets a little bit more complicated. There are 7 types of common special abilities. Taunt, Spell Damage, Plus 1, Deal Damage, Charge, Divine Shield, and Draw Card. All of these have a different point value that I've given them based on what I think they're worth. And you can also tell what you think Blizzard thinks they're worth by checking their card value of different individual cards. Let's take a look at Senjin Shieldmaster for example. He has a card power of 9. 3 attack and 5 health plus 1 for taunt makes him a balanced card and a pretty good one at that. Now let's take a look at Silverback Gorilla. He has a card power of 7. His attack plus health equals 5 plus 1 for being a taunt creature which makes him come out with 6 points, 1 point underpowered, so it's not a really good card. Novus Engineer, she has a card power of 5, she has 1 attack and 2 health for 3 points, plus 3.5 for being able to draw a card for a total of 6.5 points, making her a really good card. Loot Hoarder has pretty much the same stats as Novus Engineer, except he's a 2-1 and draws a card upon death, both of which are really good cards. Now let's take a look at some other good cards. Azure Drake has a card power of 11, a 4-4 plus 1 spell damage and a draw card for a total of 12.5 points, 1.5 points above average. A really good card. Argent Commander has a card power of 13, a 4-3 of charge and divine shield for a total of 13 points. A pretty balanced card, except for the fact that its two special abilities combined together make it an excellent card. Fire Elemental has a card power of 13. 6-5 with deal 3 damage battle cry for a total of 18.5 points. So Fire Elemental is a very overpowered card. Acidic Swamp Ooze has a card power of 5. At 3-2 he's already balanced but his ability to destroy a weapon is pretty powerful. Even if you don't use his effect he's still a solid 3-2 and if you do get its effect off this card is overpowered. Now there are a whole bunch of other unique effects that cards have and evaluating their value isn't always easy. For example, Wind Fury cards value is determined by their attack times 2 plus health. Cards that summon minions just add the attack and health values to that of the card that it summons to determine the card's total power. And then we have cards like Defender of Argus. He has a card power of 9 and 3 3. If he gets his effect off on one other minion, that adds 3 points to his card power and makes him balanced. If he gets it off on 2 minions, that adds 6 points and puts him 3 points over and makes him an overpowered card. But if you don't get his effect off at all, then he's just 3 points underpowered. Cards like these are very conditional when it comes to determining how good they are. Now, obviously, the card power system isn't perfect. It's more or less a way to figure out how Blizzard values different skills, and I think they completely undervalue draw power. And some cards are just straight up overpowered. Also, in most cases, more health is better than attack. Usually creatures with one health are pretty useless unless they have a really good effect to make up for it, because it's really easy to destroy minions with one health. And cards that cost one mana are generally not good unless they have an overpowered effect. But that's not really about card power and more about the metagame and how hand advantage and board control works. 